So in this video, I want to give a basic introduction into CoCalc and how to use it. So to get there, let's first start on Google and let's type in CoCalc. And that'll take us to the sign in page. I'm already signed in here. Let me look at a project here on Learning Sage. So projects are kind of like the folders for CoCalc where they hold all the files that you're going to work with. So in this project, in this folder, I have a file here called Introduction to Sage, which will talk us through some of the main things that you can do in Sage. So let me open that up by clicking on it. In CoCalc, you interact with code, the mathematical code, through Jupyter Notebooks, which are just essentially a way of organizing code, not at, say, a command line or where you put in code and then run it, but rather a document form for running code. So you can run code line by line uh, called a workbook, essentially, a Jupyter workbook here. So let's do a brief introduction to Sage and see how it works. So Sage is a mathematical software where we can do calculations in. So for instance, if I want to do two times three, I could just write in two times three here and I'll hit shift enter to evaluate that. And then thankfully it gives me the answer six that I expect. Note that I need explicitly the times here. Sage needs you to be explicit when you're entering things. If I just do two space three, then it doesn't really know what I'm talking about. It says, what, what do you mean by two times, or two space three? So you really need to be explicit of two star three for two times three. I can define a function. Say, let me define a function f of x as x squared. Again, I'll hit shift enter to make this assignment. So now Sage, thinks that f of x is x squared. So whenever I ask it, what is f of x? It says, oh, that's x squared. That's what you told me. Good. I can evaluate this function at, say, x equal to 2 by just doing what seems natural, f at 2. Well, OK, it gives me what I expect. Um, and uh, similarly, f at 4 gives me what I expect as well. I could show this function in a more nice mathematical looking way by saying show f of x, and that gives me this nice formatted version of what the function looks like. Sometimes this is very useful when you have complicated looking expressions and the uh, tech input um, that you have been written, writing here is hard to read, so then you can show it in this form, it's a little bit easier to read. Sage thinks that the variable x, or the, uh, the object x is a variable, so if I ask it what x is, it says it's x, but if I ask it some other variable, say z, well, Sage doesn't quite know what I mean by that. I haven't defined z. Strictly speaking, it seems like I haven't defined x, but I kind of did implicitly up here. When I said f of x is x squared, then Sage said, oh, okay, since you're defining a function, x must be a variable, so I'm just going to assume that x is a variable from now on. But since I haven't said anything about z so far, it doesn't really know what I'm talking about when I say z. So if I want to use z as a variable without defining it as a variable in some other way, I have to say z is a variable. And so I do that by this expression var parentheses, and then inside quotation marks, I put z. I can do single or double quotation marks for uh, a variable. So here I'm defining z and t together. So now this will define these as variables. Notice that this output just spit out the last thing in the line. It just spit out t, so this was just saying, oh yeah, t is now a variable. It didn't do the same for z. If you want to be able to spit out all of the lines of a box of input, then you have to run a certain amount of code, which I put up here at the top. Uh, this shows all results of a cell when it's evaluated, not just the last line. And so now when I evaluate this, it should spit out both lines. So now if I ask Sage, what is z and t, it says, oh, it's z and t. Those are variables. Excellent. So now I can use z in numerical expressions or algebraic expressions. So for instance, say I have the expression z minus 2 squared and like to expand that. Then I can just tell Sage to expand z minus 2 squared, and sure enough, it does. I can also ask Sage to do more complicated expressions like factoring. So I have an expression here polynomial in z, I can ask it to factor this, and it happily does, which factors into the nice combination z plus 1 cubed. 
Sometimes when you write expressions, Sage will automatically simplify them. So for instance, here I have 2 times x minus 1 plus 3x plus 4. And I evaluate this, and Sage is just going to evaluate this and simplify it down to 5x plus 2. So it's distributing the 2 into the x minus 1 there and simplifying everything for me. That's really nice. I can do calculus with Sage. For instance, say I have my function f of x from before, which is x squared, and I want to integrate it with respect to x. So I can just call integrate, then parentheses f of x with respect to x, and Sage will happily spit out the answer. One third x cubed. Good. There's lots of different ways of writing the integral or the integrate function. You can write integral or integrate for the function. Either of them works just fine. Sometimes I'd like to do a definite integral instead of an indefinite integral. And for that, then instead of just writing comma x after the function that I'm going to integrate, I can write comma x from 0 to 3, and this will now give a definite integral. I just want to point out that there are also things called methods in Sage, where you don't have to just call it as a function like this, but you can say f of x dot integrate. Sometimes this will come up when there are things in Sage that are only defined in, as methods in this way. And so this will happily give the same result. You don't have to have a function inside that integrate function. You can do whatever you want. So you could just say integrate um, x cubed plus 4 with respect to x. You can type that function in directly inside the integrate and it will spit something out. Let's talk a little bit about numerical precision. Happily, Sage already knows about many of the special numbers. For instance, it knows what pi is. At least it says it knows what pi is. In order to extract what that value is, then you have to say, tell me the numerical value of pi. And the numerical value of pi uh, is, used, is found using this reserved variable n. So you take n and put pi in parentheses, and now it spits out a numerical value of pi. Sage also knows about e, so you can find the numerical value of e here. But sometimes you need more numerical digits of precision than Sage just naturally is going to spit out in its calculations. So for instance, if I want to know pi to 20 digits, I can just say I want the numerical value of pi, and then inside the n uh, function, I'm going to put comma digits equals 20. It seems like a very uh, reasonable thing to say if you want more digits of pi, and so now it will spit out more digits of pi. I can integrate functions that sometimes don't have nice expressions. So for instance, here I integrate e to the x squared, for x from 0 to 1, and this spits out the error function. It also spits out things in terms of the imaginary number i, which Sage also knows about. And so Sage knows about special functions already built in. If I want a numerical value for this integral, however, I could just say I want the numerical value of this particular integral, again using n to find a numerical value, and now it will spit out a numerical value for that. I can do more calculus, so remember I have my function f of x, which was x squared. I can take a derivative of that by taking, saying diff of f of x, and then indeed give me 2 times x. I could also evaluate this by, by saying derivative of f of x, and it says 2 times x again. Uh, sometimes you need to be a little bit more explicit when you're taking a derivative. Maybe you also have a function which is a ver function of multiple variables, and so you need to be a bit more explicit. And so in that case, you can say diff f of x, but then put comma x or comma y, whatever your particular variable is. And so now it will explicitly take a derivative with respect to that variable. And again, this is essential if you have a function which is a function of two variables, say of x and y, as in here. So I have a function g of x, y, which is x squared times y. And I can take a derivative in the x and y variables here. I want to talk briefly about vectors. So you could define a vector using this object where you say vector and then open parentheses and the square brackets your vector here. I'm going to define a vector u, v, and a vector u. When I define a variable in this way, I don't get an output. 
and that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's doing what it needs to do, it just uh, doesn't need to tell you anything because you just defined a variable. I can add these two vectors by taking v plus u, and vector addition happens in the usual way, as well as vector subtraction. Uh, the dot product in vectors is found using the star. That's the natural way to use the dot product for vectors. And so indeed here I find that the dot product is zero, regardless of whether I do v dot u or u dot v. I of course can find the magnitude squared of a vector by taking the vector times itself, so u dot u. Sage also has built in an ability to find the norm of, of a particular vector. So I can find the norm of u and the norm of v by just using this norm here and does the same thing, or alternatively, you could take the dot product and tend to then take the square root of it, which of course gives the same result. Finally, I want to talk briefly about matrices. So you can define a matrix in much the same way you define a vector. So I say matrix here in round brackets, and then inside in square brackets, I'm going to define my matrix. So here is my top row of the matrix, 1, 2, and my bottom row of the matrix, 3, 4. So I have a two by two matrix here. And let me see what Sage thinks that is. Okay, good. That's indeed what I told it to do. I have a matrix one, two, three, four there. And I can do all sorts of things that I would normally do with a matrix, like find the determinant of the matrix and others. Uh, we will reserve videos like that for future videos for more details about how to use matrices. One last thing I want to point out is that as you're moving around, you notice sometimes that there's a highlighted line here, and that allows you to insert a new cell in between two existing cells. And so you can always do that um, by clicking on um, one of those highlighted spots. If you want to get rid of a cell, you can click on the cell over here and hit D, D, or D twice, and it gets rid of the cell itself. Okay, I hope that was a useful introduction to Sage.